but yeah, essentially, this is the basic workflow to creating spec map. Um, it's just sort of getting sort of grayscale uh, detail breakup to sort of help uh, create the effects that you're after. Um, and it's normally, I'll normally do it like uh, pretty much once I've finalized the diffuse. Um, it's kind of good to get maybe a, a rough temp in, but the final tweaking definitely sort of needs to be done once once all your values are established in your in your diffuse texture. Um, or even by doing this now, I can sort of see that maybe I need to bump up the the values of the gold here. Um, maybe a little brighter. So Julius has some presentation questions. Um, he's curious, like, will there be a posing process um, for this model? He, he says it doesn't look like this needs much posing, but for like a character, you probably want to do quite a bit. So he's just wondering how you kind of go about doing that. Sure. Um... Yeah, this even this guy, he's I mean it's it's not too bad a pose, but he's still pretty he's pretty neutral still. Um uh yeah, so you'll need to This is probably something I guess I'd cover more in a future supplemental, but um just quickly you'd obviously want to rig it. Um uh, and then you can actually move and pose it, rig and skin it first. Um and yeah, then it's just up to you to sort of come up with a nice um pose that maybe reflects the personality of the character a little bit more or is a bit more dynamic, not so sort of neutral as you sort of see here. Um, yeah, and then once you've got a pose, you can bring it in into Marmoset and, and light it properly and, and take some pretty screenshots and you're good to go. <laughs> It's a lot more complex than that, but uh, yeah, obviously getting like the right lighting, um, getting that to sort of fit with the background, or if you're actually going to overlay it on a background or something in Photoshop, you have to sort of go through that process. Um, yeah, lighting is probably the biggest hurdle, and and getting like a, a nice a nice pose that sort of reads well and. Um, looks good. But yeah, we have to sort of finish the texturing before we sort of get to that stage, and yeah, right. we also have to be comfortable rigging and skinning. Yeah, she's a whole nother beast. Yeah. Gems. Yeah, 
Yeah, I know, I know I said this this listener was meant to be on presentation and all that, but I don't really see a point talking about it when we don't have a final model to present. Um, but when we do, right. uh, you'll definitely hear about it. Yeah, so this those kind of questions I think will be answered later then. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I just quickly did the spec for the, the gem then, uh, the gem. It's full bright white, which is giving it quite a nice soft highlight. Um, the glossiness is working pretty well on the gems. Uh, we're getting a little bit of weird reflection on the sort of contact point. Um, this is probably an area where I'd, I'd use that blackout technique and just dull down the specular in, in this sort of region here, just so you don't get that um, unpleasant looking reflection right on the base. Um, we could break it up a little bit, but I kind of like how well it reads from a distance. So I'll probably leave that for now. Okay. Yeah, do you guys have any other questions? Um, we've got about 25, 30 minutes left of the class. Um, in this final half an hour, I guess I'm just going to keep tweaking this back. Um, I might jump back to the diffuse for a little bit, um, but that's pretty much what I'll be doing for the rest of the, the lesson. Um, so if you have any specific questions about, I guess, anything, um, ask a time. Yeah, the cavity map is meant to sort of help with this whole darkening of regions, um, but in some cases it doesn't get everything. <laughs> 